Well, thanks for coming, everybody. Is everyone having a good time? Yes. Woo! Good. All right, excellent. Um, so we're, I think we're wrapping up pretty well, and I'm looking forward to the after party. So um, today we're going to be talking about customizing WooCommerce. Um, for the obligatory Who I Am slide, uh, my name is Gary Thayer. I'm a um, WordPress developer. I'm based out of Portland, Maine. I'm also the lead organizer for WordCamp Portland, Maine. Uh, I organize the meetup set there as well. Um, Google Analytics certified, and I work at Hall in Internet Marketing, uh, which is an agency based out of Portland. Um, slide says it all. Um, the big gold seal there says that we are um, certified by WooCommerce as a gold level expert agency. Um, so we do a lot, a lot of WooCommerce stuff. Um, so hopefully we'll talk about some of our best practices. I might even be asking you guys some questions because Lord knows we're still figuring it out too. So um, I think we should just put this out there. Um, WooCommerce is, is a lot of work. There's a lot of moving parts to it, especially if you're coming from maybe just a, a regular blog or your standard static content website. Um, E-commerce can have a lot of moving parts to it. Um, this might be a little hard to see from this distance, but basically the biggest important part of this are your products. You have something that you're actually trying to sell in this case. Um, each of these products is going to be represented as a post within WordPress. Um, they all are going to have images that are going to help you sell and convey what this product is. They have descriptions that will tell you the exact attributes of the products. Um, how much are these things going to cost? What are are they on sale? Um, how much can you afford to sell these things for? Um, how much do you have in stock? Are, do you want to use the website to maintain inventory? Um, when you're shipping these, how big are they? Are they very light but very large or vice versa? Um, and then as well, like how are you going to organize your site? If you have an apparel line, is everything pants? Or is everything split by gender? And then inside of that are pants and shoes and shirts. Um, so products have a lot of components to them. Um, furthermore, there actually needs to be the checkout process that's related to this. Um, so with checkout, um, who's going to actually collect the credit card payments? Are you going to work with Auth.net or Stripe or PayPal? What's the benefits and the deficits to each of those? Um, do you offer coupons or any sort of sales? What are the restrictions associated with that? Um, order management. When somebody places an order, how do you know what to do with that order? Do you just go onto your website and print it? Are you working with a fulfillment agency? Do you receive a thousand orders a day and you need to update this with an order management system to work with your call center? Um, are there any third-party integrations? For example, if somebody makes a purchase, are they added to your MailChimp? Are they added to some CRM? Um, you know, there's a lot of different integrations you can make at the checkout process. Um, shipping is always a labor as well. Um, you know, we talked about a moment ago how products can come in different sizes. Maybe products need to be packaged in different ways because they're very fragile. They have a lot of foam or styrofoam that come with it. Um, maybe something's perishable and it needs to be sent overnight, but other things can be done media mail to save costs. Um, and then again, Who's actually going to put these things in the boxes and drive them to the post office? And then lastly, the most important part of this are your customers. Your customers need to have accounts that they can easily access and log in. Uh, are you going to have guest checkout? Or sometimes you can't allow guest checkout because there's very important aspects to these orders that your customers need to maintain and update. Um, are they going to receive notifications upon completion? Um, will they receive future emails about what other offers you're having, or will they be notified when uh, their package is in the mail, or when it's about to arrive, or when it actually has arrived? Um, and that's the easy stuff. This, a lot of this is a part of WooCommerce core. That's not customizations in any case. These are the things that WooCommerce already helps you to do in most situations. Um, so let's take a look at a couple examples of, of what businesses might be trying to tackle when they're going into this. And I think a lot of what 
people need to think about when they're working on setting up their e-commerce site or determining how to live in this environment is determine what can their website do, but also what can my business do to facilitate my website and its needs. Um, so in this case, my store sells perishable products which need to be delivered and shipped on a specific date. So this would make sense if somebody is selling um, food or um, something that can expire over food or flowers or anything that can just go bad while shipping. Um, furthermore, oftentimes these perishable products might be related to a special event, a holiday or a wedding or um, yeah, they need to arrive at a specified time. So when you're developing your website, you need to think about what are your products, how long can they survive, how do they get to where they're going, and then how do I subtract that backwards to actually prevent people from purchasing something that needs to be in Guatemala today. Um, uh, here's another one. I want to sell products to some of my customers, but not all of them. Um, this can be true for membership sites. So maybe there's, maybe it's fairly simple. Maybe you only allow checkout if people are logged in. Or um, maybe you are restricting different types of products. Um, furthermore, we've worked with people who have um, products that are for sale for everybody, but if you have a specific user type that is for wholesalers, <coughs> wholesalers receive 30% off. Technically, they're buying the same product, it's just at a different price point. So we need to update the site based on user restrictions. Um, this one's my favorite. Uh, my business is a store, but you can't buy anything? Uh, okay, let's talk about this. Um, and in this specific case, um, they had all the trappings of a store. They have products, they have SKUs, they have merchandise, um, they have shipping, but you don't actually pay for anything because it's all samples of products. So they need everything that WooCommerce offers except a checkout process, but they still need some sort of sign up. So, um, so there's a lot of challenges that can be associated with this. Um, and I guess my point that I'd like to get to here is oftentimes a development problem, so I'm a developer, how many here, people here are developers, just to get a sense? Okay, how many people are store owners, business owners? Okay, a couple of you. Um, but a lot of developers in the room here. So, I'm going to talk to the store owners first and say, um, sometimes the problem's on your end. Um, and I think, and now I'm going to talk to the developers and say, sometimes you need to tell people the, the problem's on their end. Um, I think that can be a very cordial conversation. Um, you know, we had a client who came and says, well, we have this product that we want to sell. It's an $1,800 product. Um, it's a series of classes that they're going to sign up for. The first class, they pay $750. The next class, they pay $540. The next class, they pay $700. I mean, whatever the math is on that. But it was these arbitrary values that didn't mean anything. And it's just the way they always did it. And it's, had we have just did what they told us to do, we would have developed this very complicated checkout process of subscriptions and fulfillments. And it turns out, after digging into this process, the very first person who made this purchase paid it in that order, and they've just continued doing it ever since then. So it's, it's good to have these conversations. Now, that being said, as a developer, you're not going to always sway the business. As a business owner, sometimes there actually are good reasons for complexity in your website. But I would ask that both parties be willing and open to have that conversation about what goes into your website and what goes into your business. And when you're working with a developer, they are your partner in this case. And when you're a developer working with the business, your job is to provide them with the most streamlined experience for their customers. Um, so at this point, we're going to look a lot more at the development side of things. Um, uh, so. The first and most common place so that, as a developer, you might want to start modifying your website is uh, by modifying the theme files. Um, so if anyone's sort of familiar with, Word, uh, with WooCommerce, excuse me, within the plugin, there's a templates folder. And any assets that are inside of that folder can be copied into your theme and modified and, and replaced. And you can modify them just like any other PHP 
template on your site. It makes it very easy to just go in and drop content, add an image, move stuff around. Um, it's, and I would say that if you're a budding developer just getting into creating your own store or learning how WooCommerce works, this is a very approachable way to edit your website and change it for your needs. Um, however, anyone that has uh, been involved in WooCommerce for a while and has definitely done a lot of edits is probably accustomed to this edit screen. Um, uh, who here is generally working with WooCommerce? And uh, how did 3.0 go for everyone? Fine. Do you have many edits on your site and theme edits? So that's my experience as well with very simple websites that don't have a lot of theme customizations. They typically aren't that troublesome. Um, but in this case, you can see that this website has, I'm going to guess, 20 edits to different theme files. Um, Furthermore, a lot of these versions, so in the first one we can see cart.php was edited uh, two point, you know, the old version is 2.3.8, now WooCommerce is at 3.0.3. This file needs to be updated. Um, all of these files need to be updated in order to maintain security, best practices, and just general formatting with the rest of your site, and to ensure everything continues to work. Um, so because of that, editing your theme files directly can be troublesome um, over the long term. Um, if you're, is anyone not familiar with this? Where to find this? Um, so if you, when you're logged into your website, if you go to WooCommerce under Settings, um, there is a System Status tab, I believe it's titled, and inside of that it tells you like what version of PHP you have, and there's a series of options in there. But at the bottom it tells you every WooCommerce plugin you have installed and it's um, whether or not it's up to date, and then it will tell you every theme file that you've edited and whether or not that's up to date. And those are things that you should regularly check with each WooCommerce update. Um, now, in order to edit and maintain these, um, my recommendation generally is to try not to. There's a better way to do it, and we'll look at another method shortly, um, using actions and filters. I would highly recommend doing that in those cases. Um, just because every time you go to do one of these CMS updates, you're going to spend time parsing through the files to figure out what changed. Furthermore, when you make an edit, uh, clearly mark the beginning of your edit, what you did, why you did it, where it's there. Um, where does it begin and where does it end? Um, that way, when you go and you begin looking at the difference that are in these files and you make these changes, um, what you'll need to do is you'll need to look at WooCommerce's old file, WooCommerce's new file, your file, and figure out what the differences are between those three. Make that update and then commit it and push it up to the server once, once you've QA'd. Um, so three-way diffs are not a lot of fun. Um, if you are making large functional edits of like, oh, my checkout experience has this entirely new format. Um, don't just put it in with your regular theme files. Create a separate file and link to that. Or create an action, do action, and create a function that will link to it. Um, it will just save you time as you go from update to update. Um, the better method to edit your website is through actions and filters. Um, I like WooCommerce because it has it's done a very, very good job of making itself very editable and extendable. Um, there's actions that, so on the checkout process, there's an action that takes place when somebody hits that button. There's an action that takes place once the form has been read. There's an action that takes place before it's sent to the payment processor. There's an action after it comes back from the payment processor. There's an action before it's saved to the database, after it's saved to the database, and then once somebody arrives at the bank. And each of those endpoints have different things you can do to affect your, um, your process. So for example, if I wanted to include, I don't know, the exact date and time somebody made their order on the thank you page, I could write and save that by using one of these actions. Um, 
they're less likely to deprecate, and when they do deprecate, they do continue to work for a while, and you'll start receiving notices informing you that they've deprecated. Um, uh, so that's just a lot, um, they'll, they'll last the test of time better. Um, however, they will require more understanding of PHP coding functions, um, occasionally object-based um, uh, programming, and just how WooCommerce works under the hood. Um, so this is a rather simple example of um, adding a checkout field to the form. Um, so this function, add custom checkout field, is going to start by this function gets a variable called checkout, which is a, um, an array of all of the checkout fields that appear on the checkout page. It will then, um, we're defining a series of arguments um, for a new field that we'd like to add. And in this case, we're adding um, a text field. Um, we're giving it the class SSN field because we're adding a social security number in this case. We're labeling the field class for social. We're making this field a required field. And we're saying that the max length can only be four characters. So, you know, the last four of your social can never be six characters, so we'll make sure that they can never write six characters. Um, we then use the function WooCommerce form field, which will then create a WooCommerce field and inserts it as part of um, the checkout form creation process. And then this function is added to the add action WooCommerce before order notes. So if you were to look at one of these template pages, and we can actually do that right now. Um, so if we go into WooCommerce, and it's probably very small, so give me a second. There we go. Is that better? Um, so we're going to go into WooCommerce, we're going to look at templates, and we'll do checkout, and billing. So we can see in here, this is a fairly standard looking PHP template. H3s, if else statements, and we have this do action. So in this case, if we had a function, if we had text that we wanted to insert right here, we could just type out our text, and when we refresh our website, we would now see this text begins to display. Another option would be, we could take this action name, go into functions, and write do, or rather, add action. This is the part that we're tagging. We're going to name a function something. I'll just call it um, before checkout. And now I'm going to write a function called before checkout. And I'm going to echo the text that I want in this case. And so now, this text would appear, and let's see if we, let's see if I did a good job. Commerce.dev, i got to add a product to my cart, I've got to go to checkout, <coughs> and we see the text that I just wrote. Um, and so, and these, these things are peppered all throughout WooCommerce. Um, so, going back to my slides, if I can find them. Very good. Okay, so uh, this would be adding the form field in this case. Um, now, when somebody hits submit, the data that's on that form field actually needs to be validated in some way. Um, so we have another action, WooCommerce checkout process. So when somebody hits submit, the checkout form needs to be processed and read in some way. Um, this action is then looking for a function called is SSN valid, and the function is SSN valid. Then 
grabs the value of the field, last four SSN, and writes it to a variable, checks to see if it's set. If it's not set, it says, please enter your last four of your social security number, because this is a required field for our checkout process. Um, and if it is set, it checks to see if it's a numeric value. Um, and if it's not a numeric value, then it reports another notice. Please make sure your social security number is a number. Um, other steps could be added to this. Uh, it could be, um, we're going to check to make sure that it's exactly four characters, um, that there are no letters involved. I guess is numeric would do that. Um, but um, there could be any number of steps involved. Maybe this checkout is for only for people with a social security number that starts with a seven. I don't know. Um, but you can do lots of um, validation here. However, this does not actually save it to the database. We now need to save this value to the order itself. So there's yet another action, WooCommerce checkout order, uh, update order meta. Again, this is another step in this ankle bone is connected to the shin bone, connected to the knee bone. Save SSN to order. This function takes the order ID that's being passed to it. It looks for last four SSN, and if it's not empty, then it will update the post meta for this order, calls it last four SSN, and then sanitizes the field just to make sure that there isn't any instances of um, corrupted data or bad information or some sort of cross-site scripting attack, just to keep it clean. And then now, this would be um, saved as part of the checkout process. So. Once this order is completed, it's now a part of the order history. You'll see it on the order screen uh, when you're looking at your received orders. Um, and I'm using the example of a social security number with a text field, but it could be anything like uh, additional information about my house, or could be a date picker field of when I need a package to arrive by. Um, so there's a lot of options there. Um, what we've looked at here is a very procedural edit that um, kind of applies to the process of your website, but not so much to the display of your website. Um, the use of actions and filters can also be used to change how your website will appear. Um, so this is another example. Um, this is pulled directly from the WooCommerce uh, content single product page. Uh, and this page uh, this is just a part of the template, and it defines what order um, the content will display on the product page. So let's let's bring that up as an example. Uh, if I can find Chrome. So we have our my test product, and. In this case, we have a title, test product, we have the price, and we have add to cart and the SKU. And let's say, for whatever reason, I wanted to change the location of test product. Maybe I want this to appear last or in some other location. One thing I could do is I could go into the theme file, pluck out that little piece of code that defines where it's put, copy it, put it somewhere else, and then we're done. Um, but then we'll need to update and maintain this file month over month every time we do our CMS updates. Um, so another option is we have we can do a remove action. So in this case, remove action, WooCommerce, single product summary, and in this case, the title. Um, what you'll see here is this five, and the five is defining its priority in relationship to other products or other functions called on the same hook. So, and it counts up. So five is a very high priority location. Um, but if I change this to remove the action and then add another action of the same name, but this time I have the priority of 41. If I now refresh this page, we'll see that my title's moved. Um, so this can be helpful for saying, I don't want SKU to appear, period. And instead of deleting that and then having to re-delete it every time you update your WooCommerce, you can just call the action and remove the action. Um, sorry, I should just get rid of that tab. Um, 
But if you update your WordPress, you're you gone, right? Don't you lose what you wrote? You would not. So, okay, so that's a, that's actually a great question. So, uh, and I haven't covered that. So, the functions and the filters are not written directly into your template pages that get updated with each release. You would generally put that in your functions file, which doesn't get updated. Um, or um, what we try and do is we actually create a separate file that we call WooCommerce Overrides, and we run those functions as their own distinct file, just to keep it clean. That file will never be updated unless we specifically make that update, um, and uh, we just need to make sure that the, the actions that we're calling are continuing to display on the website. And if they ever disappear, then we're you know we're in trouble at that point. But. Um, uh, yeah, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, thank you, good point. Um, so uh, you'll also see in this, this top section here, um, this whole uh, coded, uh, this commented out block, um, WooCommerce single product summary hook. So that's the first part of this action segment. And in this second part, we can see what all, all of the functions which are called on this. So the title, single title, Single title, single rating, single price, single excerpt, etc. And they have a number. And these numbers are the priorities. So instead of me having to like go into WooCommerce and really try and dig through what functions are being called everywhere, they're telling me quite explicitly what is here. And if I ever wanted to get rid of the price, I could do remove action WooCommerce template single price. Ten. Um, Great. Uh, so questions on actions or filters before we move on? Yes. So as you're extending actions, is there any like performance concern or something like what, what should you not do? Sorry, is there anything you should not do in actions because of performance? Like how many times they run or something as sure. you're extending this? Um, yeah, um, just to repeat the question for the camera. Um, so if, the question is, are there any performance issues related to using actions in anything um, that should be avoided in this case. Um, generally, in my experience, not really. Um, I mean, you want to write clean and efficient code in every case possible. So, I mean, if you had as a do action some very heavy recursive process that then runs every time the page gets loaded, um, that's the problem. But it's really more of a problem with the function you just wrote and less of a problem with where you hooked it in, generally. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's always exceptions, but um, but the action, the the do actions really are just bookmarks that you're inserting code into. And, you know, they're called hooks because you're kind of hooking in your your stuff at that point. Um, does that answer your question? Uh, is there more? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Like, do you have an example? Yeah. Um, I guess around meta. Fields okay. and whatnot, adding like, is there anything you've tried to put in there, or someone had a business problem where oh, you're like, whoa, you're adding way too much. Oh, okay. Want to, you know, kind of downstream from like that. Like too much. Like you're asking for too many questions, or. Yeah, yeah, or it, it's somewhere along like during the, uh, the full mm -hmm. kind of checkout process, you hit a snag. Right. I would say so, especially as part of the checkout process, I have run into more experience, more problems with, user experience related to the checkout fields than I have with performance concerns. More generally than not, um, if you the more fields you add to a checkout, the lower your conversion rates are going to be. And the more of those fields which are required, it will impact your conversion rates. Um, but uh, as far as like performance and server load and, and that, I, I haven't personally experienced any issues. Cool. Any other questions before we can carry on? Good. Okay. Cool. Um, plugins. There's a lot of really great plugins out there. Um, the benefit to WooCommerce is that it's being used, I think, by 30% of all domain, domains with um, an e-commerce component. Um, so there's a lot of resources available. And quite often, um, these things have already been solved. You don't need to code them up from scratch. Um, my first point of reference is always WooCommerce.com slash plugins. Uh, my feeling here is 
It's generally reviewed by the creators of WooCommerce. They're high quality. Um, they have lots of great actions and hooks and filters to, to modify everything that WooCommerce wants you to modify. Um, but they come with the same caveats that every plugin does. It's not your code. You can't guarantee its future. They might stop updating it. They might take it in a completely different direction. Um, you need to be a little bit more flexible with that. And this, I think, then goes into back to that um, communication between the developer and the business owner of this plugin does 95% of what you want. Um, we could maybe get another 3% through development. What can we do about this last 2%? Um, and by using the plugin, it might save hours of development time, which equates to thousands of dollars. Um, but if it's not exactly what the client needs, it's not going to work. So you have to talk and be flexible about this stuff. Um, a few recommendations. Um, the Woo subscriptions plugin, very good. It's very robust. Um, it can be a little complicated, but you know it's a subscription tool. It does recurring payments. Um, it uh, okay. Thank you. Um, it does recurring orders and payments. Um, very customizable. Very. Uh, lots of great options to it. Um, WooCommerce One Page Checkout is a nice landing page tool. Basically, you combine the checkout page and the product page for a single product. So it's good, really good for like uh, PPC campaigns where you're trying to sell one specific item. Um, URL coupons creates a URL endpoint, and by visiting that endpoint, uh, a coupon is automatically added to your cart. Great for email newsletters. Um, PDF invoices just kind of cleans up um, the receipts, which are kind of ugly out of the box. So they, they make them pretty. Um, all right, I only got 10 minutes, and everybody hates shipping. So, <laughs> um, so um, just kind of quickly blasting through it. Um, there's kind of two ways of handling shipping. Um, neither of them are great, and the, it's always a compromise. The first of which is what's called the bin packing problem. Um, you have nine items, how do you fit them into five boxes? And this is, you know, trying to figure it out to the best of the, um, the system's uh, understanding. The problem with this, well, you know, we have a saying at work, garbage in, garbage out. Um, if you don't know the size of your products or the weight of your products or what sort of um, packing materials are related, um, or like we worked with a client that really wanted very specific and accurate and actionable shipping and labels and every time. However, they had a perishable product and the amount of ice they put in the box depended upon how full the box was. We have no way of calculating this. Um, so that isn't a good situation for them. If you, in order to use the bin packing, um, in order to use bin packing, you need to know the exact dimensions of your products and the exact size of the boxes that they're going to go into. Um, and then the system, ideally, will calculate all of this out, look at uh, query an API, such as UPS or USPS or whoever, and um, calculate the cost for your customer. Could be very right, could be very wrong. And it requires a lot of labor on the business owner's end. Another option is table rate shipping. Um, this is generally my preferred option. I recommend to clients that they take a look at their shipping kind of as an aggregated total, find a good average number that feels right, and maybe we just base this upon the quantity of the item or the weight of the item or the size of the item, find some set, and then um, calculate it based on that. Sometimes it's going to be a lot more, sometimes it's going to be less. Um, but it's all about trying to strike averages. This requires a lot less work on the side of the business owner, but it's also less um, accurate. So how flexible can you be in this case? Um, so um, I think we talked about pros and cons here. So questions? Let's open it up. Yeah. Um, so I have a site that describes a lot of different tours from different companies. Yeah, you got a mic next to you. Oh, sorry. Uh, hi, I have a, a site that describes a lot of different tours from different companies, uh, and uh, I'd like to for people to be able to purchase those tours, which are 
you know, limited quantity. Mm -hmm. Do, is there any way of doing that, printing out a voucher and having them go on their way? Because right. Um, well, so as far as WooCommerce, I mean, my immediate thought would be, um, so, and by tours, you mean like everybody gets in a bus and goes sees the Grand Canyon yeah, type things? Yeah, exactly. Um, so only 10 people can fit on a bus, so you create a product that has an inventory of 10 items. Um, it's a virtual product because nothing's actually being mailed in this case. Um, and that <coughs> would handle a lot of it right there, I think. Unless there's something I'm missing. Uh, the, the hard part is knowing if there's space on the bus. Oh, well, I guess uh, you would uh, need to know the quantity of the bus. I just wasn't yeah. sure if people, if uh, in, in working with things like this, if you had, if WooCommerce had access to other companies' APIs, mm -hmm. and if you've done that kind of work before. Uh, yeah, so we, we have done that work, and there are plenty of API integrations. If you go onto the um, WooCommerce.com slash plugins, there are so many um, API integrations. I'm, I'm not sure what integration would um, work for bus schedules, to be honest, or like however that would work for it you. It would depend on the tour company right. integrated into whatever. Right. So, and I guess then the next step would be, well, there isn't already a plugin, so we want to hire somebody. And then this goes into the actions and filters, and um, you can use, you know, forever the buzzword of these things is the REST API. Um, to create some sort of database that then gets hooked in, thank you, and um, handles the inventory and the quantity for your product. So I can s see in my mind's eye the development to that, but I'm not sure there would be an exact out-of-the-box solution for you. Other questions? Yeah. Um, um, we use a UPS mm -hmm. plugin and I don't understand why it keeps giving me a price for regional boxes that is below the actual price when it's not a function of weight or anything. It's a regional box. Right. And that's kind of frustrating because it's kind of like my profit goes out of the door yeah. because I'm paying more than the system says, the plugin says. Mm -hmm. and have you experienced that? Uh, do you, we talk to UPS to right. say, hey, what's going on? Um, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, I have experienced that. I would recommend just double checking your settings to make sure that you have the correct size box in this case. Um, we've run into issues like this where we actually had to reach out to UPS or other shipping handlers and just say, hey, what's, what's up with this? Um, and, oh, well, there's some minutia that your local regional shop is different than the national standards. I'm not, um, it's everybody hates shipping. <laughs> um, I yeah, I wish I had a better answer for you. Um, I, what I will say is I do believe that plugin does allow you to add um, some additional charge to it. So you might be able to say just take the number and increase it by twenty percent. We call this shipping and handling, not just shipping. Um, and then that might solve your problem in this case. Uh, yes. I'm the designer. Um, microphone behind you. I'm a designer. I don't really know coding. I'm kind of following what you're doing. Uh -huh. um, how? What's the best way, or what are my alternatives for styling WooCommerce? Okay. So yeah. I'm building a WooCommerce site. Right. I'm not that familiar with WooCommerce mm -hmm. yet. Um, I usually use. Have you ever heard of Artistier? I am not familiar with it. it it's a um, theme generator, which you can. You customize, you do what you want with mm -hmm. it. Um, so I've been using that to build themes. Mm -hmm. And I know that WooCommerce has a storefront theme, which is basically yep. vanilla. Yep. So what are my choices for <clears throat> dealing right. with this? Um, that's a good question. Um, I would, I mean, WooCommerce generally likes people to use storefront. Typically we use, um, we actually have a framework that we created called scaffolding um, that has a, we have a branch specifically for WooCommerce. If anyone's interested, you can go to scaffolding.io. Um, but um, the standard that we do is we duplicate WooCommerce's SCSS files and we bring them into the theme and we deactivate the standard 
settings for WooCommerce. So we've, we've basically you know, recreated them within our theme and then modify those files. Um, so that, that's how we do the CSS side of it. Um, as far as the front end theming, WooCommerce's template files should be handling all the, the template side. None, there generally isn't a theme that's better or worse of that. Um, unless the theme itself is trying to create WooCommerce files. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure I'm answering your question very well because I'm definitely a back-end developer. <laughs> yeah, I'm you know, changing colors, changing yeah. widths. I mean, as far as that, so, I mean, if you're just changing things very minutely, just do it like you would modify any other theme. It really wouldn't matter. WooCommerce really wouldn't matter much more than any other plugin or any other theme. If you're really trying to get into the weeds and like gut the whole design process, like before um, WooCommerce had responsive carts, we were making responsive carts, which meant that we were just you know, gutting the code in these cases. Um, in that case, we deactivated WooCommerce's styles completely and coded it up from scratch. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 sorry, I don't have a better answer for you. Um, yeah. yeah. There are actually a couple of add-ons, just things like colors, as a for instance. Um, so, sh hating shipping, um, do you know of any alternative distance rate shipping add-ons than, than the main one that's in the uh, extensions library? Um, <clears throat> Uh, I generally stick to the WooCommerce plugins library, to be honest with you. As far as shipping goes, I never strayed personally. Have you, okay, so then have you had to solve the problem of free shipping up to a certain distance followed by charging? Um, yes, and I would do that with shipping classes, and I would base that on, say, the contiguous 48 states get one shipping standard, anyone in Alaska and Hawaii and Guam get a different standard. Um, uh, and that's done, that's actually part of WooCommerce support. Okay, that, I, I think that's a different issue. The issue that I'm talking about is a, a client where they'll ship up to 50 miles for nothing, uh -huh. and then they want to charge per mile after uh -huh. that. And so I solved it with the distance rate shipping plugin, but the problem is when they change their price per mile, they have to remember to change the amount it subtracts for the first 50 miles. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, as that has actually happened to them, somebody ordered a product and, it, and they got a refund on shipping. <laughs> because they hadn't, they'd only changed yeah. one of the values and not two. So I just wondered if, you had a, if you'd have to I solve don't, that. I'm afraid I don't have the, I, I haven't encountered that one, so I don't have the answer there for you. That sounds interesting though. Um, it seems like a really simple problem, but it turned out not to be as simple as it looked. <laughs> All right, um, I think we're done at this point. Do um, you have a question? I'm happy to talk with you after, um, but uh, I think we got to wrap it up. So thanks, everybody, for coming. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll put all this on Twitter. Um, Gary A. Thayer. Um, I think that, well, I tweeted just before this saying I